Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dor. You know, when it comes to relationships and dating, typically we either look for a partner that will challenge us, a partner that will balance us, or a partner that will inspire us. And typically the NJ and the NP communication falls under inspirational communication. These types both value navigation. They wonder where we are going. They wonder where we are headed. And so the NJ and NP, they are, they aspire towards the same destination, which is intuitive in its nature. It's that stores at the root of imagination. But their approach, how they want to get there, varies. The NJ has one set path they want to follow. The NP has many platforms they want to jump between before they get there. So often the intuition manifests differently, their process is different, and that's why this falls under inspirational communication. The differences create an interplay where the other person will show us a new path or a new way that we did not know previously existed. What it is is you see NJs often having a vision. NJs work from vision. They have strong visualization skills. They build up an idea in their head of where they want to go and how they want to get there. And then they can get quite obsessive as they move towards this journey. It's always this vision. It's always this journey. It's always this path. They're always walking there. They're always heading there. They're always thinking about it. The NP style is that of dreaming of different options. Maybe I could go there, or maybe I could try that out, or maybe this could happen, or maybe I could meet that person, or I could say this. Or Often what you see is the NP builds up multiple options and optional routes to take. This is also why in the communication style of the NP, the NP communicates through dialogues and exchanges and questions and arguments and counter-arguments. And often what you see is the NP will contradict themselves in their sentences and in what they say. They will first say one thing and then they will say another thing and then they will say another thing. What you see physically is, you know, physically we only have these two hands. We only have two hands. But metaphysically, on the intuitive and perceiving level, mentally it is like we have many hands. We have ten hands. We have multiple hands. We can multitask. We can do multiple things at the same time. We are not confined to our physical bodies, but our minds are a lot bigger and a lot more diverse than that. Our neurons can fire in multiple directions at once. We can hold multiple ideas in our head at the same time. True things, their multiple statements can be true at the same time. So what you see is the NP's mind is wired very, very differently from your mind if you're an intuitive and judging type. Often the intuitive and judging type works from one base idea and then they organize a whole system of arguments and statements around that idea and this is also how they build up a strong sense of vision. They build up an idea in their head and then they hold this idea in their head and then they let this idea slowly manifest and build up itself. A process is starting. A small idea becomes a part of a process. It's picked up in the current of the NJ's mind and it spins around uh, uh, like a soup, you know, when you're turning down a soup uh, and you're spinning it down to make sure everything is meshed out and synthesized properly. So the NEA process is all about the synthesis of an idea, turning it into a system, turning it into a reality. Often a lot of people say, hey Eric, maybe you're an intuitive and perceiving type because I see you sharing a lot of ideas in your videos. But often what I work from is the creation or conceptualization of an idea. I'm not sharing ideas that I read in books. I'm not gathering new input. I'm not uh, reading up the latest article by Dario Nardi and I'm not going up and watching the latest video by Dave Superpowers and I'm not going out and I'm not reading Katrine Farr's last book on Enneagram and I'm not sharing that in a video with you. What I'm doing is I'm conceptualizing my own ideas, creating my own system of ideas. So this is also uh, important when you listen to my communication style. The NGA communication style is a monologue, it's not a dialogue. It's not first this and then that and then this and then that and then there and then here and then there. It is a singular thread of thought that slowly develops itself in the course of the video. I like to talk from start to finish. I like to close off my topic at the end. I like to work from a start to a beginning. There is a start, there is the beginning. There is also a process through which the idea or the story takes form. And so 
what you see is the NJ is a person that likes to avoid interruptions. I talked about it in my last video on NJ vs SP. Surprise an NJ and they become and they feel distracted. A sudden noise occurs in their environment. The NJ goes, what's happening now? The SP goes, oh, that's interesting, what's happening? <laughs> So the response is completely different to sensory stimuli and actions and activities around you. Then Jay likes to work in a small, uh, I would say, quiet office or quiet space with minimal amounts of interruption so that it can get truly in flow, truly in sync. So what I do is I put on my headphones and I open up a lo-fi hip hop playlist with as little vocals as possible. And I sit down and I write and I write and I write and I write and I script and I devise and I draw up and I create and I build up systems. So when NJs and NPs talk, often what you see is the NJ wants to talk from start to finish. They have an idea and they want to finish it up and then they want to close it off. The NJ is inclined to want to close off all ideas in the end they set intellectual boundaries this is how to think this is how not to think this is you do not think about this but you should think about that you should not argue about this but you should argue about that so there are intellectual principles for how the nga mind works and in that sense it's a lot more linear than the np mind what you also can look at with np is uh, the np's minds and arguments often respond to themselves. They say one thing, but then they respond to their own thought. We could do this, but then that would happen and that wouldn't work. And so we need to do it like this instead. So what you see is the NP is constantly building up and they're going, oh, this route, oh, we, can't, we can get there, but we can't get past that. So we need to go there. So here they are going around and developing something or building up something. So the NJ and the NP mind, it's all about building up a vision and talking about a vision and talking about it in the bigger on a long-term level it's speculative communication often the nj speculates or assumes something will lead in a certain direction the world is headed towards this global catastrophe with climate change and blah 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 and we need to do this and this and this to stop it the MP mind goes, this could happen, or this, or that, or that. And therefore, we cannot speculate. We cannot say for sure what's going to happen. Because we there are constantly multiple options. There are constantly multiple factors. The world is too complex to be predicted. It is There are too many factors. We cannot speculate. We can only brainstorm. <laughs> and here, often, the NP works from brainstorming, throwing out different ideas. And the NJ mind works from picking up these ideas and processing them all together and creating and turning it into one singular idea. If we weigh together the economical theories, the psychological theories, the environmental theories together, we can create this bigger theory. So it's one big theory versus many different ideas. Often what the NP can teach the NJ is to phrase their bigger theories into singular ideas. The NJ is afraid to be to make themselves vulnerable and to make themselves vulnerable that is to devise and translate their bigger system into smaller ideas you can try to get people interested in a bigger system but often what you have to start with is you have to phrase out spell out the smaller ideas of this bigger system so Often the mistake NJs make is we talk about our process, our intellectual process, but we do not talk about the ideas that come about from this process. This is also why our ideas tend to be too general to be applied in society. Our ideas tend to be too broad or too vague. It can be hard to decipher NJ communication. What are they really saying? All I hear is the process. So you're thinking about this, but what are you actually deciding? What are, you actually, what are your actual ideas? What is it actually you want to do? So the NJ has to spell out singular ideas and topics and questions that can help people understand and follow their thread of thought. So this idea could help us understand human relationships. Okay, what do you mean with human relationships? You know, For example, when those people argue, it's about uh, their need for emotional boundaries. It's about emotional boundaries. Okay, so what kind of boundaries do they set? You know, it's all about, in the end, translating 
and being able to apply a bigger system to understand today's modern problems. What I tell myself in today's videos is like, hey, I want to use my ideas to understand and communicate modern issues like uh, a job hunt or job market for millennials or the anxiety or stress of uh, cell phones and constant mobile pre presence. It is, uh, you know, the day-to-day -day realities of, you know, uh, relationships and dating, Tinder, WhatsApp, and dealing with all those levels of society. It is about Instagram and what we post and what we decide to share and what we feel com comfortable putting out to other people. Those are the things I would like to understand today and those are the things that I believe could help enrich our society and enrich our self-understanding. In the event, everything we read in a horoscope or in the MTI or in the big five personality tests we have to be able to apply to understand their person situation. How are we with presentations? What do we like about our workplace? What uh, kind of people do we want to date? What kind of uh, life do we want to live? Where should we live? What kind of place do we want to live in? And how would our ideal work environment look like? That's also why I tried to talk about flow uh, because I felt that was a component that was missing fundamentally. So when the NP hears all this, they're constantly applying ideas. NPs excel at idea application. What I see is I can explain a concept to an NP and they will immediately know how to put it to practice. They will use it to think about present relationships, arguments they've had, conflicts with their parents, you know. They will think about uh, issues at work, they will think about stressors you know, they had recently. And they will bring up all this feedback and that's why it's an inspirational exchange. It's an exchange that helps uh, first pick up the ideas that can be processed and synthesized by the NEA hive mind <laughs> and then for the NEA, the NEA provides the process that the NP can work through creatively. Often the NP's creativity and ideas do not come from nowhere, they need a process to work, you know. You cannot be creative on demand. It's very difficult to be creative on demand. Hand somebody a white piece of paper and tell them to write something and they go blank. What? What do I write? I don't understand. But the NJ provides an intellectual process through which ideas can be formed. So the NP mind can sit down listening to this, writing down notes and taking down articles and coming up with ideas. Maybe I could write about that. Maybe I should research this. Maybe I should look into that. And so this is how the two types deal with each other. This is how they interact and this is why it's such a great pairing. It's a pairing of strength and it's a pairing of, you know, intellectual growth. It primarily drives, you know, the NJ and the NP relationship is the primary driver of intellectual growth. While the NP-NP pairing is the driver of self-awareness. And the NPSJ drive is the drive of development and self-control and self-discipline. So, the relationships we choose have to do with what it is we seek to develop, you know. If the modern realities of discipline and control and organization and being on time is the most important to you as an NP, that's the kind of relationships and partners you will attract in your life, people that can help you with this. If your primary desire is intellectual growth, if you're looking for new ideas or inspiration, then it's an NJ partner that will speak the most to you. If it is the search of self, and if you have a very strong sense of self, and uh, you have a very strong need for freedom and for creativity, then it's the NP mind that is the best fit for you. The primary conflict you see between an NJ and an NP type is in that desire for creativity and creative expression. Often, while the NJ can provide a process for the NP, the NP can also feel controlled by this process. This process can be linear and narrow. The system that we work from can feel like a box or can feel limiting. It can feel like it does not fit. I want another process. No, I want to try this process instead. So there can be a desire to step out of the processes and to have true freedom, true, you know, like that moment where you step outside of everything uh, and you feel you can do anything at all, that state. That's something that the NPs can value a great deal. And that's also the primary conflict you'll see with an NJ. Um, stop being so narrow. Stop being so obs obsessive. Let's make a change. Let's go somewhere else. Let's try something out. Let's do something different. 
the NJ mind can appear stagnant at times, especially if it goes too far into judging, it becomes too much about control, too much about process, too much about organization of ideas. Similarly, the MP mind can appear too distracted. There can be too many ideas, and in these ideas, uh, these ideas uh, might be too far-fetched or too uh, impossible. So the NJ can feel skeptical about what is being said and what they hear and what they observe. As an NJ, I can feel very skeptical and sometimes very narrow. I can feel very critical of the ideas that other people bring before me. It can be that people go to me like, Eric, 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 have you read about this? Have you tried this out? Have you heard about this? And I can be like, I'll look at it later. And that's often how I am. And it uh, might sound douchey, and, but it's often how I am. I can't take in all the ideas that are in front of me. It's impossible for me sometimes to understand all the opportunities and all the possibilities that lay before me. So that's the challenge. That's what I'm trying to really learn. To really learn to step out and to think bigger. So that's what I want to talk about. I hope this video helped you understand the NJ and NP exchange. Thanks for watching and hope to see you guys in the next video.